We are born. We learn to sit, crawl, walk, and run. But those of us who develop congenital hip dysplasia may need more help than others. Hip dysplasia is the term used to describe one of the various abnormalities of the hip in children. It tends to run in families and can present in either hip in any individual. It is most usually seen in girls and firstborn children. There is not an exact known cause of hip dysplasia. However, there are several factors that can contribute to developing this condition. Occurring in about 0.4% of all births, some common risk factors for the disorder include a family history of hip dysplasia, babies born in breech position, oligohydramnios, a lack of intrauterine fluid, packaging problems, conditions that result in part from the in utero position of the baby, for example, club foot and torticollis. And in nearly 25 out of 50 cases per 1,000 Native Americans, the baby is born with congenital hip dysplasia. The left hip is more commonly associated with this disorder than the right and is believed to be due to the common intrauterine position of the left hip against the mother's sacrum, forcing it into an adducted position. Children in cultures in which the mother swaddles the baby, forcing the infant's hips to be abducted, also have a higher rate of hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia can also be associated with underlying neuromuscular disorders such as cerebral palsy, myelomeningocele, arthrogryposis, and Larsen syndrome. To assess a child for this disorder, at bath time, check the size and alignments of the infant's buttocks while in prone position. The infant's legs should be equal in length. Both legs should be kicking. Infant skin folds in the upper thigh should be symmetrical. And monitor the gait and posture of older children. The treatment for congenital hip dysplasia varies according to the age of the patient. From birth to six months, the patient will be placed in a Pavel harness. This device holds the hips in a flexed and abducted position. The pressure exerted on the acetabulum enlarges the joint, helping to correct the dislocation. Over time, the newborn's body will adapt to the correct position and the hip joints will begin to form normally. 90% of newborns treated with a Pavel harness will make full recoveries. In older babies, the Pavel harness may not be as successful. In this case, the surgeon will place the six-month to one-year-old patient under general anesthesia, allowing the muscles to completely relax and the hip joint to resume proper positioning. Once the joint is in place, the surgeon administers a spica cast, a hard cast from the waist to the ankles. This cast is similar to the harness device, but allows for much less movement. After one year of age, surgery is usually the treatment of choice due to the buildup of scar tissue in the acetabulum, which must be removed to assure proper placement of the joint. After the surgery is performed, the patient will be placed in a spica cast. Infants treated with the Pavel Karnas or Frischka splint will be monitored in home with frequent visits. Nurses should encourage patients to ask questions and clarify that the child may be held and can also sit in a chair. Infants treated in the hospital should be given as much attention as possible, providing a homey environment. This will help the child adjust to frequent or lengthy stays. When treated with the spica cast, neurovascular assessments must be done, monitoring capillary refills of the toes and repositioning frequently. Circulation checks will need to be done every 30 minutes for the first few hours after the child is put in the cast, then hourly after that. Do not use a pillow under the child's head. This pushes the chest tight in the cast, causing difficulty breathing and discomfort. The child should be repositioned frequently, and pulling the child in a wagon is a good way to change the child's position and allow them a change of scenery. To relieve some of the itching while maintaining skin integrity, a piece of gauze is put in between the cast and skin and can be gently moved back and forth. When it has become soiled, clean gauze is tied to one end and pulled through the other end. An opening for bowel movements and urination is kept dry with frequent diaper changing. Avoid small toys that can be placed inside the cast, causing irritation and possible breach in skin integrity. Parents will need to be taught to observe for signs of poor circulation, pain, and infections. They will also need referrals for home health care. When caring for a child that suffers from hip dysplasia, remember these goals. Keep the cast clean and dry. Check for cracks or breaks in the cast. Any rough edges should be padded to protect the skin from scratches. Keep the skin intact. 
We want our patient to improve with physical therapy. Above all, we want these children to be able to run unimpeded into whatever adventures their lives hold. She's a good girl Loves her mama Loves Jesus And America too She's a good girl She crazy about it